Hello, I'm Bernard Keevy. Now, anyone can earn, sorry, anyone can learn anything they wish to learn. Everyone can do it. Everyone's got the ability to do it. And what we need to understand is that there's a lot more to learning than we realised, you know, when we went to school. Uh, and I'm talking now about something I've been reading up on. I've listened to audio on Audible by Brian Tracy. I've read books by Colin Rose and Malcolm Nichol who founded this concept, but the idea is called accelerated learning. And the whole idea of accelerated learning is that anyone can learn anything and they can learn it a lot more quickly than you would have thought was possible. Uh, so what I've done here is I've mapped out some ideas from it. So the first thing is that there's a six stage formula called MASTER. And MASTER stands for, <clears throat> M stands for getting your mind right. <clears throat> now we learn better a bit of a cough there. We learn better when we're in the right frame of mind, a resourceful frame of mind. Uh, and what happens is that's when we relax. So you need to take deep breaths and close your eyes and be really relaxed and, uh, you know, in, in, in what's called a resourceful state. You also need to buy into the subject. So if you're keen and emotionally involved in it, then what happens is the brain produces uh, en endorphins. Dopamine is one of them. And what that what these endorphins do is then they, they, they come when you feel good, but they lubricate what's called the synapses, which is the gaps between the neurons in your brain. And by lubricating them, they make the links across neurons much more quick and effective. So being in a relaxed state and enjoying the learning and being emotionally involved, enjoyment's the other thing. Those things help us learn better because they actually make the links between the neurons work much better. So, first of all, learning should be fun and we should be in a relaxed and resourceful state to do it. The second letter there, A, stands for acquire. Now, this is really interesting as well. And you may have heard of this before, but it's still very important. Acquire stands for the fact that there's at least three different preferred learning styles. There's visual, where you prefer to read things and see diagrams. There's audio, which as you can imagine, means that you listen to tapes, audio, or to people speaking. And then there's kinesthetic, which means you learn by doing. Now, this is where it gets interesting because research indicates that when we're children, the most preponderant of those three is the kinesthetic me me um, method. They're all fairly even, but kinesthetic is more preponderant than the other two. But by the time you get to be adults, it's the other way around. The other two dominate and kinesthetic is about 20 percent of people. And the other thing is that most of the people who drop out from the education system and underperform, something like 20 to 6 percent are read in one of the books, although it might have changed. <clears throat> but most of them tend to be kinesthetic rather than the other two. So the vast majority are kinesthetic. And there's a quote somewhere from some expert to that effect. Uh, and why would that be? Well, the reason it would appear that that's the case is because traditionally education caters to the visual and audio styles of learning and it caters to specific types of intelligence, which I'll come on to. Um, and so if you've got a, a type of intelligence that's different to the one education caters for, and if your learning style is kinesthetic, then it's quite likely that you won't have enjoyed learning at school. Uh, as an example, for example, young children, they like to move around and, you know, interact and learn things by getting their hands dirty, etc. Well, in school, the first thing you're told to do is sit there at your desk and you're not allowed to move around. Well, if you were around, allowed to move around, you might learn better. Obviously, there might be other issues like, you know, chaos and preventing other people from uh, learning. So there are issues. But basically, sitting there and not being able to move isn't doing people with a kinesthetic style of learning a favour necessarily. OK, so that's that's the um, three learning styles. Now, this eight here, that stands for the fact that there are eight different types of intelligence. And the two most common ones that are catered for in the education system are verbal reasoning. So that's, you know, being able to read and um, follow things logically through. And then numerical reasoning, which, again, is numbers and logic. Well, but there are six other types of intelligence. There's spatial awareness, there's interpersonal, intrapersonal, um, being good with your hands, being uh, understanding nature. So there's eight different types of intelligence. And the education system tends to only focus on two of them so again it means if you're part of the other six you might be missing out but again if you want to learn in terms of lifelong learning then you can use all eight of the different types of intelligence to learn most effectively and you can use all three of that types of learning styles to learn effectively so 
everyone I've, I've read this as well i've seen this said that everyone is potentially a genius in one of those eight areas you know potentially that you know you have to work towards it but everyone's potentially a genius in each in one of those eight areas and what happens is we tend to sort of have a spread of these learning styles although one tends to be more important than the others but basically you need to learn with the three different styles and we tend to have a spread of the different types of intelligence but again maybe one or two of them would be more pronounced in us um the other interesting thing is if you learn with the different learning styles and the different intelligences you actually put the knowledge that you're gleaning into different parts of the brain which again reinforces it and makes it much more likely that you'll re remember it okay so this bit here well so if you were going to do this accelerated learning and learn so this could be a language it could be a business skill it could be anything right if you're going to do that when would you do it so then we come on to the difference between important and urgent important has a uh, is important to us and it matters but urgent has a deadline again as one of these people said i think it's colin rose says this if it's urgent it probably means that the deadline's imposed by someone else whereas if it's important it means that the deadline is for you to impose now if you've ever read stephen covey's seven habits he talks about the quadrants and Quadrant two is the one that gets neglected in most people. And quadrant two is the things that are important here, but they're not urgent. And because they're not urgent and they don't have a deadline, they don't tend to get done. And the only way they will get done is if they're in the diary. And what are these things? Well, these things would be working on your business, working on your mind, working on yourself, your skills, accelerated learning. So this is all covered in section two, and it won't get done unless it's diarized and you, know, you make time for it. Now, over here, I've said, well, why would you want to do this? Well, it could be, first of all, <laughs> using different parts of your brain and learning and constantly lifetime learning is really good in terms of anti-aging. It's, it's really good in terms of staving off, you know, brain deterioration, dementia, etc. So it's really good from that point of view. Uh, it's enjoyable. You know, if you pick something that you want to learn about and you learn about it in a way that suits you, it becomes enjoyable and, and it's not like you know it's not like the drudgery that maybe some of the formal learning might have been so it's enjoyable it's good for your career or your job or your business or whatever which means you learn more money so there are some of the reasons there are others but there are sound solid reasons why you might want to do this and then how and this gets interesting again because this picture here is a head <laughs> and the bit inside is the brain now the brain it's really interesting there's one brain and there's two brains, the two brains being left and right, logical and creative. Um, most learning, formal learning seems to uh, focus on the left bit rather than the creative right bit. The creative right bit can be brought to life through music, through colour, through doing. So using all the different learning styles in an imaginative way uses both sides of the brain. Um, but typically, people who sit down and study from a textbook and go through it point by point are only using the left-hand side of the brain, and they're only using the verbal reasoning and the numerical reason, reasoning, which the formal education system emphasises. So again, you can see the whole point of using the whole brain fits in with this whole idea of accelerated learning. Uh, but it moves on from that because there are three parts of the brain. There's the primitive um reptilian brain which is down at the base of the brain which basically governs things like our breathing and our blood circulation etc all the bodily functions it's reptilian because probably reptiles don't think much more deeply than that you've then got the limbic system which is the second level up which we share with animals and that's that's all about emotions and that's the fight and flight response uh, and fear and then you've got the human brain the neocortex which is the third level up and as someone explained it the uh, stem of the brain is a bit like your wrist. The limbic system is a bit like your fist. And then the neocortex is a bit like having your hand over the top. That would be the neocortex. It's the smallest and thinnest bit. The, sm the neocortex is what makes us humans different because our neocortex is far more advanced than any of the other mammals in the animal kingdom. Uh, so why is that important? Well, again, that's important because if you use the different learning styles and the different intelligences, you embed the knowledge into different parts of the brain uh, and if you're looking at um, three different parts of the brain and eight learning styles and three learning, sorry, three learning styles and eight intelligences, you can see how you can populate the brain in many different areas, which makes it much more embedded. And, you, you know, you, you'll recall it much more readily and understand it better. Um, 
this bit here, Oliver, this is um, a nice little a mnemonic for remembering the best ways to learn. So we learn. So the O stands for something that's odd. So police are always appealing for witnesses too, because if they noticed anything odd or unusual, you know, that's you, you remember it if it's odd. Um, L stands for linked. So one of the main memory techniques is to create a story where you link things together or to associate objects with um, what you call uh, pegs. But again, you're linking things. And if the mind links things together, it remembers them. Uh, I stands for interest. So if we're learning something we want to learn, which is the whole point of this, we're much more likely to learn it well than if we're learning something that other people tell us we have to learn that we don't particularly want to learn. You know, like, I mean, you may be into ancient Latin and you may not be, but supposing you're not into ancient Latin, you're not going to learn it very well. V stands for visual. So obviously visual is important for visual learning styles, but it's important for everyone because it's part of the learning process. So charts, diagrams, colour, anything that makes it visible, mind maps. That's visible, visual, sorry. And that, that's a very important bit. E stands for emotional. So the more we really want something and we can envisage ourselves having learned this thing and used it and benefited from it and feeling emotionally uh, enjoying having done so, the E there, that means we're much more likely to learn something. So if we're emotionally involved and we really want it, we'll learn it better than if we're not. And R stands for relevant. So again, um, the more something's relevant to us, the more likely it is we'll be able to learn it effectively. So the whole area is really fascinating. These are the people to look out for, Colin Rose and Malcolm Nichol. Um, I've got their, one of their books here. It's called Accelerated Learning for the 21st Century. It's about 20 or 30 years old, actually, but it's still brilliant. Um, Brian Trace is on Audible. Hope you found that interesting. And if you wanted to discuss this further or find out you know, explore other ideas in terms of mindset and in terms of business, growing your business, etc. Have a look at bernardkeevy.com because I've got quite a few videos and things on there. I uh, hope you found that useful. And I see there's a few comments from uh, Clarissa. Hello, Isha. Hello, uh, Clarissa. Very good. OK, um, thanks very much for watching. And I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much. Why not take part in our Sales Accelerator Roadmap program? With a free assessment of your marketing, through an algorithm, you'll get a 12-page detailed report telling you exactly what to do and in what priority order and when to do it and how to do it. And if you do do it, you'll end up adding 50,000 to your bottom line over the next 12 months or so. So to find out about it, go to www.bernardkeevy.com and then just click on the green button saying that you'd like to take part. Thanks very much.